What is up my Vangabonders, it's time to get back to work. On this episode we'll be working on some of the little details that often go overlooked. When I first started this project I never thought I'd be going this deep, but here I am, scrubbing a steering box. The first time I got this bus on the road I skipped many of the little details. Some could have led to catastrophic failures, and others led to the inside of the bus getting wet when it rained. Since I am working from the front to the back of the bus at the moment, I figured it'd be a good time to refurbish the steering box and set it aside for when it's time to reinstall. When I removed the steering box, it was covered in a thick layer of grease and dirt. This led me to believe that I had a leak in either the input shaft seal or the output shaft seal. Perhaps both. Obviously, the first thing I had to do was get it cleaned up. Thankfully, I had Mallory to help with this part or it would have taken twice as long. The first thing we tried was using engine degreaser and brass bristle brushes. Brush bristle brushes. And we spent quite some time just scrubbing away at it. The grease was still pretty thick so we moved on to using EXTREME purple power degreaser. This seemed to be working pretty good after some time of scrubbing as well. To get the last bits of oxidation and grease off, we used soft bristle wire brushes and a couple of drills and just drilled away. And once the steering box was getting nice and shiny, it was time to protect it from future oxidation. And for that, I used CRC heavy duty corrosion inhibitor. According to many people on the Samba, this is the closest thing to what VW originally used on the transmissions to protect them. At this point, I removed the old dirt guard from the input shaft and was going to replace it with the one from my donor bus, but I then realized I hadn't ordered the new seals yet. I searched the internet for the best place to buy them, and it turns out Wolfburg West had the best prices. I was also quite pleased when they arrived only a few days after ordering. The packaging was 10 out of 10, and the product looked great, so thanks Wolfburg West. Please sponsor me. It was now time to remove the old seals and replace them with the new ones. I pulled out my seal removal tools and I got to work. I quickly realized that what I thought would be a five minute job would turn out to be a two hour long test of my patience. It turned out that my output shaft seal was seized to the steering box case and no amount of prying would get it out. I tried for as long as I could while doing my best to not scratch the shaft or the case and I searched online and couldn't find anyone who had the same problem. So I ended up taking off the three bolts on the side of the case, which I do not recommend as apparently you can't buy the O-ring seal anymore, but you've got to do what you've got to do. I then pulled the shaft out, which allowed me to access the inside of my seal and finally remove it. I made sure the case was clean and free of any debris and then compared my old seal to the new one. I then grabbed my 29mm socket and proceeded to reinstall the seal, making certain it went in straight. The Haynes manual does say, a suitable driving tool is a tube that has an inside diameter of 32mm and an outside diameter of 36mm, so it's probably best if you use a PVC pipe. I then lubed up the output shaft and slid it back in. It has to be perfectly lined up, so please be careful if attempting it this way. I pulled out my torque wrench and proceeded to torque the three bolts to 13 foot-pounds. Now onto the input shaft seal. To remove this seal, you have to take off the top plate. Once removed, I used a 19mm socket over a 34mm socket and carefully tapped it out. I pre-looped the upper bearing, grabbed my beautiful new seal, and once again compared it to the old seal. To reinstall, I used a 22mm socket and carefully tapped it into place. I slid the clean top plate back into place and reinstalled the four bolts to the same 13 foot-pounds of torque. Finally, it was time to refill the box. Once again, I did quite a bit of research and it seemed like GL4 hypoid oil is the best route to take due to the bearing races being made of brass. Unfortunately, it can't be found at your regular auto parts, but thankfully Amazon carries it. This is the brand I went with due to the reviews and it looks a lot better than the gunk that was in it before. I filled it up carefully using a silicone funnel and I definitely overfilled it, but that shouldn't be a problem. I moved the input shaft left and right to remove any air pockets and I was finally done with my steering box restoration. And well, only time can tell if it's gonna leak. So it's time to box it up and store it in the parts department. On to the next little detail that has been ignored for too long. If you haven't noticed from previous episodes, the driver's side tow hook is MIA. 
It appears to have been yanked off somehow. This is why in the episode where we towed the bus with my old car, we had to attach it to the bumper. The previous owner drilled these weird rings into the bumper, which I have since removed. So it's time to go back to what's left of the donor bus and get a tow hook. Before I removed the tow hook, I wanted to make sure I got off as much loose rust as possible. Using my thickest wire wheel, I got to work, and boy, is this thing a beast. It seems like the welders at VW weren't much better than me. I used a cutoff wheel and cut a patch that would be a bit bigger than what I needed. After I had it removed, it was time to prep the bus for the transplant. I started by wire wheeling the area to see what I was working with. It had rusted out pretty bad due to being left untreated for so long, but nothing too bad. Now it was time to cut out the damaged portion, which turned out to be pretty sketchy. So as always, please remember to wear your safety gear if you're restoring your bus. I always find it easiest to use a cutoff wheel first and then use a flappy disc to smooth out or enlarge my opening. A bit more grinding later and it was now time to modify the donor piece. Using a C-clamp, I held the piece in place and got to cutting and of course, more grinding. Once I was happy with my piece, it was time to crank my welder up to max heat and get to welding it in place. But of course, nothing ever goes as planned and my welder decided to start acting up. When restoring a bus, you should always expect for something to go wrong. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. I opened up my side panel and it turns out my wire had snapped and jammed in the driving wheel. No big deal. It's an easy fix. I got my old wire pulled out, fed the wire back in the tube, changed my welding tip to avoid the same issue, and I was back to work. For these kinds of structural welds, it's important to get a clean, continuous bead. I'd say I did alright. Now all that's left to do is paint it. But that'll be coming in a future episode. The final little detail for this week's episode is the windshield washer bottle mount. As you all know, I replaced my inner valence and unfortunately it doesn't come with the mount. Thankfully, I kept my original piece, so I was able to remove it using my spot weld remover tool, and once removed, I made sure the piece was flat where it needed to be using my anvil and hammer. I also made sure to remove all the old rust and paint to ensure the piece was paintable and weldable, and also that it lasts as long as the rest of the bus. I then test fit it by screwing the washer bottle into place and seeing how everything lined up. Once I was happy with the fit, I removed the paint from the inner valence and reinstalled the bottle to get my first tax in. After plug welding all 12 holes, it was time to use my mini belt sander to smooth things out. Boy, do I love this tool. All that was left to do was give my front floor and inner valence a few coats of epoxy primer and reinstall my washer bottle that Mallory had cleaned up for me. Doesn't it look beautiful? If you made it to the end of this video, I'd like to thank you for supporting the channel. Don't forget to leave a comment as it helps these videos perform better, which helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to subscribe as there will be new episodes coming out weekly. And as always, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. One last thing for those of you who are still watching. Many years ago, when I first met Mallory, she made this little art piece for us. Oh, shoot. It didn't even go. Oh, my goodness. That's the coolest thing. That I've is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It used to hang in the bus, and now it hangs on our wall of art. If you'd be interested in one of these made of your bus, then send us an email or DM on Instagram and Mallory can turn any picture of your bus into a piece of art. Love you all. Okay, the video's over now. <laughs>